Welcome to Electron Line. Here's our next example of how to graph a parabola. Again, we do that by finding the roots of the parabola and by finding the y-intercept. Also, it also helps to understand that the parabola either opens upward or downward, whether or not it has a maximum or minimum value. We look at the coefficient of the first term. We know that this is positive 1. A positive 1 means the parabola opens upward, meaning it will have a minimum value. But whether or not it has roots or not, that we don't know yet by looking at the first term. We need to go ahead and solve for the roots, and we do that by setting y equal to 0. So set y equal to 0, we do that to find the roots. Okay, when we do that, we end up with 0 equals x squared plus 5x plus 10. That, of course, is uh, if we write down the general form of the equation, we have y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, and we know that uh, x can be found by taking the negative b, the negative second coefficient, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, all divided by 2a. So when we plug in those numbers, we know that a is 1, b is 5, and c is 10, so x is going to be equal to minus b, that would be minus 5, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 5 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 10, all divided by 2a, which is 2 times 1. Simplifying that, we get the following. We get x is equal to minus 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 minus 40, all divided by 2. And simplifying it further, we get x equals minus 5 plus or minus the square root of a negative 15, all divided by 2. Now let's take a look at our, at our determinant is a negative number. d is less than 0, in other words, there are no real roots. And since the parabola opens upward, that means we, uh, the equation or the parabola will, will be above the x-axis. So we'll have something that looks like this, either like this or like this or like this. Somewhere it doesn't cross the x-axis, there are no real roots, and we know the parabola opens upward. The question, of course, is where exactly will that be? Okay, we do, we do know that we have imaginary roots. What we can say is that x is, either to, is e equal to either minus 5 plus the square root of 15 times i. When we factor out a, negative, a square root of negative 1, we then call that equal to i, and that's, of course, divided by 2. Or x is equal to minus 5 minus the square root of 15 times i divided by 2. So those would be the two imaginary roots. Let's now also find the y-intercept. How do we find the y-intercept? To, to find the y-intercept, that is the place where the graph of the problem crosses the y-axis, like right here. To do that, we need to set x equal to 0. This is our y-axis, this is our x-axis. We can see that x, the x-coordinate at that point will be equal to 0. So we set x equal to 0. And when we take our equation, we then say y, when x is equal to 0, is equal to, that would be 0 squared minus, oh, no, plus 5 times 0 plus 10 or y when x equals 0 is equal to 10. So if we now draw a graph, I'm looking for room on my board to draw a graph, let's do it over here. If I now draw a graph, I know that the parabola will cross the y-axis at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, at y equals 10, right at that point. Now, of course, we're not sure if the parabola looks like this or if it looks like this. We don't know yet. To help us find that, let's find the x-coordinate of the vertex. We know that the lowest point on the graph, the minimum value of the graph, has an x and y value. We know that that is the vertex of the parabola, and we know that the x-coordinate of the vertex is equal to minus b divided by 2a. So in this case, that's equal to minus b would be 5 divided by 2 times a, which is 1. And so that would be minus 5 divided by 2, minus 2 and a half. So let's go find that. So we have 1, 2, 3, that's minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. The point halfway in between is minus 5 over 2, so that we know that the x-coordinate of my parabola is somewhere along this line. 
And so that means that the problem looks, must look something like this. Now to find the y value of that uh, vertex, what we need to do there is to find y sub v that is equal to the function evaluated that is equal to the function y when x is equal to negative 5 over 2. So to find the corresponding y value of the vertex, we must plug in minus 5 over 2 in the original function. So y when x equals negative 5 over 2 is equal to negative 5 over 2 quantity squared plus 5 times negative 5 over 2 plus 10. Let's go ahead and simplify that. So this would be equal to, since that's squared, the negative then cancels. So I have a positive 25 over 4. And this doesn't cancel, so I have minus 25 over 2 plus 10. That simplifies to minus 25 over 4 plus 10, which is minus 6 and a quarter plus 10. That means this is equal to 3 and 3 quarters. So the y value is 3 and 3 quarters when the x value is equal to minus 5 over 2. So now we can find that point. So my x value is minus 5 halves. My y value is between 3 and 4. This is 3. This is 4. So right about there. And so now you can see that we have the y intercept. We have the vertex. And now we have a way to graph that particular problem. The reason why this one is more difficult to graph is because we could not find the real roots to help us figure out where the parabola was situated. Since we didn't have the real roots, it was helpful to go ahead and find the vertex to find the second point about which we can graph this particular problem. And that's how that's done.